Hello, I'm Rixie. Uh, today on Collector's Maze, I'm joined by Mimi Maynard. Uh, Mimi is an actress, a voice actress, a producer, a voice and casting director. Uh, she has tons of experience in the animation space. Uh, Sammy's Adventures, A Turtle's Tale, Thunder in the House of Magic, Fly Me to the Moon, uh, the Gundam television movie, just, just to name a few. Uh, Mimi's appeared in numerous live action uh, TV series like Heart to Heart, uh, Trapper John MD, The Young and the Restless, and she's appeared in the award-winning film uh, Private Benjamin. And she also won a Cable Ace Award for her role in the 1989 film The Forgotten. Uh, Mimi, welcome to the maze. Thank you. Happy to be here. I, I'm, I'm excited uh, to be sitting and talking with you today. So, I mean, thanks for taking the time to sit down uh, with us. Uh, I really appreciate it. So, um, where, where I want to start, I mean, I love, I love origin stories. Uh, as a creative person, I find, I find power and uh, motivation in the origin stories of accomplished people such as yourself. Um, so what, what started you down the path to becoming uh, Mimi Maynard, actress, director, producer, and co-founder? Uh, share with us those, those childhood inspirations. I mean, what, what got you started? Okay, so my childhood inspirations out of the womb, literally, I was dressed and ready to be an actress. It's just who I am. Um, I've always had a propensity to be uh, dramatic and animated. And um, I always loved uh, entertainment from the time I was a little girl. My name, Mimi Maynard, came from my first marriage. My original name was Mimi Safian, which I worked under as an actress for years as well. Um, but then I changed it, it went in the 70s, I think, to Mimi Maynard, honestly, because it was more alliterative. So it just had more of a smooth flow to it. And then um, I had a lot of interesting experiences starting when I was a little girl. I, um, my dad was a writer-producer and was doing a, a series in um, England at the time. I was visiting him. I did say I was 12, right? I wrote away for uh, an audition for The Sound of Music at the Palace Theater. And at that time, when I was younger, I used to sing. And so it's actually a very funny story. Um, there, I ended up getting the audition. They, my, you know, my dad thought I was kidding, and I went, no. I got the audition, and I want to do it. And so my stepmother took me there. And um, lo and behold, there were about 800 uh, women, little girls from parochial schools, all dressed the same, that were all auditioning for um, the same role. And so, um, of course, I walk in in a plaid pantsuit, and I'm completely like a fish out of water, plus I'm an American. And um, everybody comes in and sings Doe a Deer. And I'm going, mm, I didn't prepare that. So I went in and sang a song from Gypsy. They stopped me and said, that's very sweet, but we need you to sing a song from the show. And I ended up getting very upset. Uh, walking backstage, my stepmother wanted to take me home. And I went, no, I'm here to get this. That's how tenacious I was. And so I went back on the stage and did not sing Doe a Deer. I sang my favorite things. <laughs> I love and the so, determination. I love the determination. No, I, was, I was very, very determined. And so they let me sing the song. And then they said, now would you sing Doe a Deer? So I sang Doe a Deer. And then they let me sing the whole song. Uh, I finished. There was dead silence. I was in a black theater. I'll never forget this with lights coming at me and um it was very thrilling and then out of the audience they said would you like to come down to the pit and talk to us and i said how do i get there <laughs> <laughs> is there a ladder throw me a rope something right <laughs> so someone came up to get me um off the stage and i went down and they said we find you um very uh, precocious, very determined, and we'd like to offer you the role. And 
could I get a visa? And I said, I don't know. And it turned out that, well, my parents were divorced. And um, they offered me the role that I ended up not doing because my mother had a fit and said, you've got to come home and finish school. And I went, please. And they wouldn't. But, oh, no, it was horrifying. It was horrifying. And they did want me to do... Um, uh, the role in New York as an understudy to start, but my mother wasn't having it. My dad was fine with it, but I have to tell you what it did for me um, was really set up what determination and manifesting and dreams are about, even at that very young age. And I was not a trained singer. All these girls, I was just innately, you know, a singer and, I just did what I did. Okay, tenacity and what, what it's set up for me in my life is that you never give up. So, so tenacity, I love, uh, I love the, uh, that story uh, mainly because, uh, you know, the, the manifestation. I mean, you were 12 and um, I like what you said about manifesting, you know, what you wanted. I mean, and I think there's, that, there's a lot of truth to that. I mean, you can go in with a negative uh, attitude and, and it's not you know, you're going to be self-destructive. You're not going to, you know, you're going to cause yourself to fail or miss out on that opportunity. So I think you have to see it, believe it and want it and, and be determined. And I love your determination. And I love that story. I, I loved, I loved performing. I loved the feeling of being different. And I love the feeling that I was not like everybody else because I always had my, I always beat to my own drum and uh, I teach that today. I feel that when you have a direction, whatever that is, whatever your direction, whatever your dream is, you need to see it and vibrate that and, and absolutely believe that that's what it is you create. Because I believe we create everything in our lives, the good, the bad, but the good and what appears to be the bad is always an opportunity for us to have an incredible outcome. So I don't believe bad. I believe there are lessons. And from those lessons, we get to grow. And uh, it's been very interesting in my life because that's exactly uh, what has occurred in every area. I never thought I'd leave acting uh, on camera. I never thought I'd stop singing. I never thought, even though I have a love of the theater, but my life took me on a different journey, Rixie. And I'm so, I'm so happy that it did because I really getting, I'm really getting to experience all kinds of, I don't know, parts of the entertainment business that I never thought I'd, I'd be a part of, so to speak. And so it's been an, an amazing journey for me and I love it. You, you have so, you've done so much and you have so much going on and, 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 and things that you're alluding to, I think we'll get to here in a little bit, but I, I want to, I want to stop it and, and look at some of that journey. So, um, uh, you know, in, um, in 1990, uh, you won a Cable Ace Award for supporting actress in the 1989 film *The Forgotten*. Um, and now, *The Forgotten* is the 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 film is the story of six American POWs released um, from Vietnam 17 years after the war, uh, and they're marked for death by some mysterious political figure. Uh, and I I actually I tracked down and I found I found a VHS copy and uh, got oh, out the old VHS you. player and watched that the other night. Um, I oh, really sorry. enjoyed that film. It, it, it's a good film. I mean, it, it's it, it, great. It, it was made for TV, and I, I will have to tell you the 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 bamboo under the fingernail scene got me. <laughs> that one got me. I was like, holy oh, no, cow! No. Um, it's, but it's, so, yeah, go ahead. No, no. So you you played uh, Claudia Lowell uh, Feldhaus, the, the the German wife of one of the American POWs released. Um, mm -hmm. So um, I guess the first question I had that. Am I right? Was that based or, or loosely based on a, a real story? No. Okay, so written, not. No, it was written by uh, my then husband, James Keach, who also uh, directed it. And Steve Relsbach, who was Manson and has done a myriad of different 
uh, movies and television, and they wrote that together. And I read it and said, we have to do this. It was a journey beyond. Um, and no, I think it was based on on basically that uh, Manchurian Candidate and one other movie that I'm trying to think of. But no, it wasn't a true story. So so original idea that, that, that uh, your, your then husband and... Um, uh, had co-written. It, it, great story. I love love the show. So uh, it takes place in in Germany, right? That's where the majority of the film takes place, right. with the exception of the flashbacks. Did, right. Did I see right in the credits? Was that actually filmed in Yugoslavia? Yes. Is it that was. where you filmed? In so, Zagreb. Uh, wow. What what uh, what was that experience like on set there? I mean, what? it was fabulous. I mean, it was cold as hell, uh, but it was fabulous. I mean. That's probably one of the greatest experiences of my life because from the beginning, not only did I want James to direct it, um, but I was determined to be in it. And a lot of the casting are people that both uh, myself and James really wanted in the movie. So they were handpicked. Um, one of the actors who died was Chris Connolly. He was supposed to be in the movie, and he played Ryan O'Neill's brother in Peyton Place, and he did Paper Moon, and he had passed away right before we started shooting. So mm. we had to recast that role. Oh, I know, it was pretty devastating. But our homage was to him after we did finish the film. And um, I have to say, we really all worked as a team. Uh, the whole group of us and they most of the cast the stars of the cast back me up because I don't think I know that the uh, studio wanted a name in that role and I went no that's what I'm talking about oh, no. tenacity there it is yes and I said I'm no I'm not doing that I'm going to be in this movie and I had just finished uh, the experts with John Travolta um, which James was in as well which I played a Russian, and um, and I said, no, I'm not. I'm not doing this. I'm going to be in this. So, I it was a fight. I ended up doing it. I ended up having to speak German, um, and then I got nominated. Then I won, and the studio was like, and I went, see, never underestimate Mimi Ming. Me, me. Yeah, never, <laughs> never, never. That is yeah. so good. That is so good. I love that. I love That's that. That's what happens when you're an integral part of a of a fe of a feature or whatever. That that so. is the word for today. Integral. Yes, integral. We'll, we'll make that the word for the day. You so did. You, so you mentioned. You, I mean, you don't speak German. You had to learn uh, the yes, accent and everything. One of my actresses that I work with um, quite often, uh, June Christopher, speaks fluent German, and I went. So I, I literally work with her for weeks and weeks and weeks before I started shooting to learn what I needed to learn um, for that role. And I just, I was determined as... It, it shows. It shows in the film. I mean, excellent job. Uh, it was a great, you know, great story. And uh, I, I enjoyed watching it. So um, I'm curious, what... Uh, what did you have to go through or what was your process of figuring out who Claudia was? I mean, how, how did you find her? Well, I had to figure out, um, first of all, she's the wife. She's already remarried this other person and has a whole other life. And so the uh, main thing is when she finds out that her husband is still alive, she's like a deer caught in the headlights. And she has to make decisions that she doesn't want to make because don't forget, she was married to this man. She loved this man. She was devastated that he was missing and then finally had to come to terms with the fact he was probably dead. So when he appears, she has a lot of conflict that she has to deal with. And that's basically what I was dealing with. Plus the fact, even though she makes the decision to stay with her current husband, she wants to protect 
the man that she was involved with to begin with. And that's what she begs for and ends up doing. So it, it was a very interesting role for me because it was very, very dramatic. And um, I actually loved being able to do that. And I had the help of James and the whole cast. And it was it was a really a, a team effort. Probably one of the best, best movies experiences I've ever had. Ever. We just all of us work like this. So it was great. she seems like I mean that was such a complicated role. I mean it it, it had had to be a highlight. I mean or one of probably many highlights in your life. I mean go yes. on Yugoslavia, uh, uh you know, uh a, a feature film, right? Uh, I mean, uh, and you know, a great complicated character. I, yeah, that, that must have been just amazing. And fighting for the role, and fighting. Yes. Oh, role yes. That they, you know, the studio didn't want me for, and so that on top of it played, you know, a certain amount put a certain amount of pressure on me, but I didn't let it get to me. I just concentrated on what I needed to do, and once again. When you stand for what you believe, when you do the work, when you are dedicated, it pays off. Oh, so great. So yeah. great. I love that. I love that, Mimi. That's great. All right. So um, then, you know, it brings us to you. You played uh, Liz Lemish in, in Private Benjamin. I mean, what what a... What a movie, right? So for those who don't know, Private Benjamin is a story of Judy Benjamin's journey from her sheltered high society life uh, to independence and self-respect. Um, now, the screenplay on that was nominated for an Oscar, and it won the Writers Guild Award, if I'm not mistaken. Um, so um, I, I guess, first off, um, how I don't think a lot of people realize, I mean, how important is, uh, was, uh, you know, Judy's story uh, and you know, what was it like to be a part of that? Well, first of all, another thing that just came my way. I was at the time doing, um, doing, uh, uh, what was I doing? I was doing Underground Aces with Melanie Griffith and Dirk Benedict. And I had one of the leads in it. And simultaneously, um, Private Benjamin was happening. So I auditioned, I'd, I, was, I already was filming uh, Underground Aces, and then I was called in to uh, audition for another role in Private Benjamin. And I couldn't do it. So they had me come back, and I think what happened was they ended up writing in that role. So I was able to do something in the movie, and, um, again, I just, circumstance, it was very fun. Um, you know, when you look back, you go, well, that's the movie I should have been in, but I had a blast doing Underground Aces. That was one of my favorites as well. Uh, comedy, comedy, comedy. And, um, and I love working with Goldie Hawn and Armand DeSanti was very new, lovely person. Um, I spent a great deal of time talking to him because we were waiting to shoot. And um, it was just a great experience. Great experience. Yeah, uh, the, the, what was the other film that you had done with Melanie Griffith and, and Dirk Benedict? Remind me of that Underground one again. Underground Aces. Underground Aces. All right. I'm, I'm yes. going to have to check that one out. Not, we not will to have to. Jump That's off very Private Benjamin. Movie. I, yeah. I've met I've met Dirk. Uh, I met him. Uh, was it two or three years ago at a, at a uh, convention? Actually, we were in the same hotel. I would met him. I would met him at the convention, and then um, I'd read his book. He's got a great, a fabulous book out there. I'd read his book, and I uh, had great him sign it over we there. But uh, we ran into each other in a hotel and actually sat down for an hour and a half and had dinner. Uh, wonderful guy. Loved loved the time. Such but, a sweet guy. And by the way, very funny. He has a very dry sense of humor, yeah. and he's a very, very smart guy. Um, I was playing opposite Bobby Hedges, who I became very good friends with, and of course he passed away. I was like, wow. And Melanie, I haven't seen in a long time, but she did star. I did get her to star in um, uh, Sammy's Adventures, uh, the animated feature that I ended up producing and voice directing. And so I called on her and I said, I need you to do this movie for me. 
So, yeah, we stayed in contact for a while. And then, um, yeah, we had the same manager. I brought her to my manager. And uh, it was, it was a again, all circumstance. So, yeah. D just being in the, the, the right places at the right time and saying yes and having the determination not to let, you know, someone bump you out of the spot, a studio to bump you out of the spot. Yeah. I love that. And the director that directed Underground Ace is a pretty well-known at the time, director Bob Butler, who did Hill Street Blues. When I did Underground Aces, he had said to me, I will mentor you to direct because I was always in, always wanting to set things up. And he goes, you're meant to direct. And I went, no, 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 no. I'm an actor. How stupid. But at the time, that's where I was. But I, I, that's an opportunity I wish I would have taken up because I think I would have had a ball directing comedy, especially. Oh, I can imagine. I can imagine. So, but, you know, uh, jumping gears to the animation world. I mean, so you did, I mean, you are on the other, so you, you've been in, involved with so many, so many yes. projects in different roles. I mean, not yes. only are you voicing, but you're, you're voice directing. Is is that correct? And yes. help, you know, in casting and producing. Um, yes. What, so what was that, what was that transition like from, you know, uh, actress to, you know, director, producer, casting? Well, I still do voices. I still am in the movies, but I put myself in when I, when I feel it's right. I more or less did transition into directing and producing casting too, but it was um, natural. I had lost contact with a very good work person I knew who became a good friend. <clears throat> and um, I had just left a company um, and I didn't know what I was going to do. And uh, again, no accidents. I meet up with her husband, um, who's a writer that I work with, and um, his wife, who I work with, Gina, Gina and Dominic Paris. <clears throat> and um, we got together literally by chance when I had come home from my Colorado house. And they said, would you like to team up? And I went, I don't want any more partners. <laughs> <laughs> but we ended up being partners. And within six months, we got our first animated feature done. Uh, it, it's a very long, funny story, but it ends up that Dominic wrote Fly Me to the Moon in seven days. We all jumped in. We all put our ideas in. Gina came up with the idea. And a company out of Brussels that became our partners for f almost 15 years after that Um ended up producing the movie and that was our first that was our you know first big project that we did with N Wave Pictures and it was a ter again a fantastic experience i got buzz aldrin in the movie um which was again a coincidence because uh they had uh, the producers other producers said we need an astronaut i went no problem I had no idea. I happened to call an agent that I knew and I said, I need an astronaut. She happened to represent, her name's Pat Brady, uh, Buzz Aldrin. She goes, don't worry, I'll get you Buzz Aldrin. Holy cow, holy cow. I so we had Christopher Lloyd, we had Buzz Aldrin, we had Tim Curry, we had Kelly Rip. we had everybody in that movie. I, I, I totally, when, uh, so Fly Me to the Moon, uh, it, it it was a 2008 animated film, right? It's and it's the story of of three young flies fulfilling their dream of going to the moon. Uh, and so you, away on the Apollo 11, yeah, yeah, on the Apollo 11. And like you said, I mean, what a cast! I mean, Christopher Lloyd, Kelly Ripa, Nicolette Sheridan, Tim Curry, Ed Begley Jr., uh, Robert Patrick, and Buzz Aldrin. I mean, he was he was the second person to step foot on the moon. And there's only been 12 people to a to yes. have stepped foot on the moon. I mean, yes. what uh, um. That, I mean, you couldn't get any better, uh, uh, what is it, technical support for the film, all right? I mean, he's like, nope, the dust doesn't go like that. It's like this or whatever. I mean. It was amazing. Uh, yeah. I can't imagine what it was like working with that cast. Um, Always the so, funnest. So the, uh, the film itself, um, the story, you wrote it, he wrote it in, in how many days? Six days? Seven days? 
Dominic wrote it in seven days because everyone kept saying to us, uh, they said, do you have a script? And we blurted out, Gina and I blurted out, oh, yes, lied, completely lied. It was just an idea. And then we called Dominic. And we go, Dominic, you got to write the script. <laughs> so he wrote the script, started writing the script. And we kept saying, we'll give it to you in another week. We're just brushing up, frantically putting it together. And um, we put it together and it ended up in Brussels. They read half of it. They were looking for exactly this movie. And um, again, stars lined up. And then in 2008, I was working on Desperate Housewives as one of the background players. And my girlfriend was um, managing her at the time. And I said, I need Nicolette, who was in Desperate Housewives. And the show was huge in the movie. So we got her, Tim Curry, as I said, Kelly, um, 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 Adrian Barbeau, uh, you name it, all the people. And I walked over to Dirk Benedict at the, uh, not Dirk Benedict. Um, it's hysterical. Yeah, Dirk on the brain. <laughs> Dirk on the brain. Uh, Fitzpatrick. And um, I said at the gym, I need you in my movie. And he went, okay. I went, you don't know me, but you will. This is not, you know, baloney. I, I just, I, I just do these things. I did it with Pamela Adlon too for Sammy's Adventure. I found her in the supermarket and I just blurted out her name. I just, I just put it out there. And then that's what I do. And that's what's always happened for me. So <laughs> it's been very, very tenacious. No, I my whole I, life. I love that. I love that because it, 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 it and I don't want to jump ahead because I had a uh, a quote that you you had had shared on one of your live streams. But that's what it's all about, really. Uh, uh, if you don't ask, you don't get. I mean, that's really right. that's really what it is. And I love that. What a what a great um, what a great lesson uh, for anyone in this you know going into this business to learn. So you mentioned uh, a turtle's tale to uh, Sammy's Escape from Paradise, um, and that's that's the animated tale of, of two leather leatherback turtles, um, Ricky and Ella, uh, rescuing their grandpas from captivity. Grandpas get captured, and so you you um, you also voice directed on this film as well, and you voiced as yes, well, right? All of them. Yes. Uh, so so nobody knew who Anthony Anderson was at the time. Mm -hmm. Gina, my partner, wanted him. She loved him. So we went after him, and I happened to have worked with his manager in my own company before. So I just called him directly and said, we want him in the role. And then we wanted Stacy Keach in the role, who, of course, I love and I've always loved. And uh, they, they the, the, those two together were a given. And so we then put Tim in this movie, Curry. Um, we put... Um, who was it? The comedian, the redhead. Oh, damn it. If you look at your list, you'll remember. I don't remember my own name. Anyway, we put a bunch of people in it. She, it was her first animated movie. Kathy Griffin. Okay. Okay. She was petrified, by the way. Petrified. You know how she is. When it came to animating, she was like, oh my God. But she did it. And um, I'm trying to think. Oh, yeah. Pam. Pamela Adlon had a smaller role in it. Um, uh, who else was in it? Um, Wait, well, so that that film, well, uh, I'll, I'll pull that up, but that film grossed over a million dollars, right? And it no, was nominated. No, 100 million. 100 million. I'm sorry, 100 million dollars, 100 million. And it was nominated for the best animated feature in the European Film Awards uh, and, and won the best it. feature film. Yeah. Uh, so uh, what, uh, what, I mean, what do you think? Uh, what attributed to the film's success? Well, here's even, here's, here's even the coup de grace. So we were supposed to be, um, we were supposed to be released by uh, Universal. And at the 11th hour, they decided they didn't want the movie. And we're, we're going, what? We had Bruno Mars. We had every single person singing in that movie that you can imagine that nobody knew at that time. And I think Bruno's first hit was the love song from our, from our movie. Oh, wow. Long story short, the director, who is also born on the same day as me, um, a little younger, 
uh, said, forget America and sold the whole thing uh, internationally. And this was really the breakthrough that the film industry had because you no longer needed a domestic distribution. That was the breakthrough. This was all, all this money was made in foreign. So this never had domestic till much later, but it made a hundred million dollars. Hmm. It's a wonderful film. Uh, we'd, we'd, uh, I've, I've watched um, actually all, all of these. Uh, I have, um, I had the, the, the DVD to, to uh, the, uh, Fly Me to the Moon, but my granddaughter wanted to finish watching it, so <laughs> she took it home with her. She loved that one, so she's got that one at home with her right now. Yeah, uh, but Sammy one, Sammy two. There's two of them. There's two Sammys. All right, so right. We'll, we'll have to we'll have to get the first one now. But what a uh, what a wonderful film! And mm-hmm. there's another that a more recent film, uh, Thunder in the House of Magic, right? Great movie. Uh, that, Great yeah, movie. wonderful, and and that's. Uh, that came out in 2013, and it's the story, and I remember the opening scene, well, it's a story of an abandoned cat who seeks shelter from a storm in a strange and, and magical house. Um, right. And, and that cat turns out to be just the, the hero that the residents need. And you have, you have Thunder the Cat, Lawrence the Magician, uh, Maggie the Mouse, and, and Jack the Rabbit. Um, so many uh, wonderful characters uh, in that film. Um, yes. And uh, how, how difficult... You know, how difficult is it finding the right voice for those characters? I mean, what's that, what's that process like? Um, well, we audition people, uh, you know, constantly. And it's, it's like, think of, and this is, how I, this is how I describe casting. It's like a composer composing music and writing music. I compose voices. So I hear the characters in my head already <clears throat> a sense of what I would love to, to, to cast. <clears throat> and then we have the auditions for the, for the actors and we decide collectively who we think would bring the most magic to that character. So that's what we do. It's a whole audition process where they read and when you're doing original animation it's very different so, so yeah dubbing is something that already exists that you're adding a a different yeah language to whereas original content so in original content the 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 voicing comes first is that right and then that's the right. animation that's right so the actor really has to create that character with what i call all the uh, idiosyncratic behavior because when we're listening to that actor and when an animator is listening to that actor, they it's a combination of seeing what the actor sees and listening to what they're creating. So if, if the actor sees it, we see it. We hear it and see it at the same time. So the more that you bring to the character with nuance, especially in original animation, the more the animators have to animate to. And that's what we teach at our school. Yes, it's very important. It's a lot of, a lot of visual, uh, learning how to use your voice in character, not be a voice, but be a character. Oh, that's a good one. I like yeah. that. Not be a voice, yeah. but be a character. What yes, a great, it's not uh, a voice, you're a character. What a great nugget for those aspiring to become voice actors. And that that, 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 that was a great uh, show. I mean, we really enjoyed watching that, uh, my granddaughter and I as well, uh, and, and my wife. I uh, love that. Uh, so great we watch. We did The uh, Wildlife, great... too. The Wildlife the came wildlife. out later. The Wildlife, yeah, that came out 2017 or 16, somewhere in there. Um, but, yeah, we did a bunch we did a bunch of uh, movies. So, so uh, kind of going back, there, there was one, you helped, um, you took the Gundam series, or you helped take the Gundam series from the Japanese yes. to, to uh, the American, to an American film. I mean, that, yes. uh, you mentioned dubbing and all that. So that, I mean, that must have been a really involved process. What, I mean, what was that like taking that, that series? That was years ago. Yes. That was my, f- actually my first intro 
to um, to uh, Bondi. And I was the only woman. And I had to sit and develop the story with all men. <laughs> and we had to take, you know, the original Gundam mm-hmm. to the screen. We ended up shooting it in Canada. But um, it, it took a year of development. And so I was very actively involved in developing it, casting it. Um, and then we ended up doing it. And they ended up making the villain's name Mimi. Because... <laughs> I didn't catch that. No way. Okay. I'm going to have to. So you're, you're the bad guy in, in Gundam. Yeah, I, I love it. I was one of the bad. One of the, yeah, tough. They said, well, I said, what would you like to name this woman? And they go, Mimi. Oh, okay. Well, I was very headstrong on what the story should be, but I also had to keep to the integrity of what they, you know, what Gundam was, because this is their project. But it was very, very not easy to get it. And once we did, it became a Canadian, I think it was a Canadian movie of the week. So, 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 and I think, so that was actually all new animation or what did they blend new and old it was or was CGI. it? It was CGI. Oh, it was all CGI. Okay. So, CGI. All, yes. so all created, all created new through, through the, through the computer. CGI. Okay. Yeah. yeah. All right. I love that. And I love, yeah. I love that you played the villain in there. That's great. Well, I didn't or or you were named the villain. My name. No, I namesake. Didn't yeah. Namesake Mimi. Yeah. I love that. All right. <laughs> So you, you touched on it a little bit, but um, Voice Masters, that's, that's a, a company that you're a co-founder in. Uh, what, what is it and what do you guys do at Voice Masters? Well, it's fabulous. Uh, we, we put this company together on a lark. So um, myself, uh, my um, partner, Paulette Lifton, um, at the time, and Ashley Bernanson, um, and we ended up, uh, I don't know, I was coaching people for years for nothing. That's how this started. And, and Paulette said to me, why do you do that? And I go, because I end up putting them in the movies I direct. I don't do this for a living. It's just something that comes naturally to me, and I'm happy to do it. So I said, and I don't want to do this. I, you know, we, you know, we want to produce, we, you know, we keep doing this. This is directing whatever we're doing. So we ended up, I said, you want to do this as a group? I'll do it. So we put a whole program together, not knowing what we were going to do. As a lark, we put out invitations. We got 150 RSVPs back. I was like, oh my God. <laughs> well, what do we do I want now? to get myself into it. I said, punt. We're going to have to punt. <laughs> what? No, so, no, no. So we ended up having this big opening and then putting it together. Um, I have a lot of background, obviously, as does Paulette in, um, in animation. And I said, all I want to do is be teaching animation because I have a wealth of knowledge in that and I could really be uh, helpful. And that was my love. So we put it together, and weeks later, we're in the studio, COVID hits. Again, what do we do? We have to punt. So we go immediately to Zoom, and we become an international company. So we teach animation. We teach it in a way where it's all about character. It's all about dreams coming true. It's all about you being committed to learning the process, especially beginners, um, and understanding the craft because there's a real understanding to, to, you know, mastering voiceover. And then from there, we ended up uh, adding classes. We do dubbing classes. Um, we, uh, we have commercial classes. We have singing for animation. We have business classes now, but my love is teaching animation. And so I, I do that. And I now 
I'm going to be teaching an advanced uh, dubbing because I've been doing a lot of dubbing for Netflix the last three years, two, three years. So, um, yeah, that's what we do. And you really are working with people that are in the trenches. Myself, uh, Paulette's won two Emmys for sound. Um, she works on Yellowstone um, as well, uh, directing, dubbing. She works in animation. We work together as directors. So, you know, that's what we do. And we've been very fortunate to not only teach, but to help facilitate a lot of young actors that are really doing well in uh, voiceover. Animation, video games, they're all blooming and they all have careers now and i'm very happy yeah so. that's great i love that i love it and yeah. all, all the uh so the classes you said are all zoom right is that correct everything is zoom yes. and online we, do, we now have gone back to in studio from okay. time to time but mainly we're on zoom because of the uh, the uh hours conflict and a lot of people africa it's all over the place the netherlands you know it's, it's, we've got to put it together so it's um, agreeable to other people that really want yeah. to learn. Yeah. So the, 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 the industry though, so uh, you can, the classes you can obviously do remotely. Can you also do, I mean, can you do gigs remotely? I mean, for those yes. voice actors. That... Still, still you can. Uh, it, now it's kind of gone back to in studio for most of it, but they still do a lot of a uh, remote as well, especially internationally. So yeah. Yeah. If you're in LA, they like to have people in the studio now. Um, but animation, especially if it's, we work a lot with China. Um, we can do it remotely because our, you know, our people in the, are in China, they zoom in. And so again, it's ours. So we so the animation it. side is in China, but so the, the, vo the voice actors, most of them now, it's better to be, they're preferring in studio. So if, if someone were taking, yeah. were, were learning remotely, then, you know, they, uh, you know, we're land, land or book a gig. They also need to plan on a, a flight for that, uh, for that gig at most times. Yeah. But you know something, they, um, Paulette works a lot with people abroad, a lot of celebrities as well. Okay. We both do. And a lot of it, she'll either fly there, fly to where she needs to, do it remotely. Um, I just did a whole uh, series where I had to have someone remote, and it turned out fine. Uh, preferably, again, if you could be in studio, because we were at COVID for two, two and a half years, it put a damper on a lot of the, you know, the recordings and timing and all that. But we do whatever we need to do. And, and, and if you're abroad, um, we just do it remotely. It's just. Yeah, Technology is getting better and better every day uh, yes. and, and, and easier to use. Uh, the platform we're using now is very simple. I love, I love uh, this platform we're using, which is Riverside. Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, and now the website is voice-masters.com. Is that where someone goes to find out? Yes. About the classes? Yes. And we're in, you know, we work with a lot of, a lot of people all over the world and um, help facilitate, you know, whoever we can. I know it was the Sovis Awards here for voiceover and we had about 15 people from our school nominated. So oh, that's great. That's yeah. phenomenal. And actually somebody, uh, one of our, one of our students won as well. Yeah. It, it's been it's been really fun for me. I, I love, I love being able to teach and to inspire. Um, that's a lot of where I come from. I love you that you do to, that. I know it's, it's, I love that you do that. I, I've, I've I been on the it. side, I've been checking it out. Uh, I, I'm, I'm going to dig into some of it myself personally. Uh, oh, how so, great. Uh, well, definitely voice. Come, yes. <laughs> uh, well, uh, so I wanted to mention you guys are live streaming on Fridays, right? Regular, yes. almost every Friday. I caught. Every I didn't Friday, catch, not this I didn't, Friday. I didn't catch. Not, not uh, this coming Friday, but in January we start again. We've been doing start, it. January start again. Okay. Every Friday since COVID. Yes. I caught. I caught the one where you were at the. Uh, you were at the uh, conference. I forget which conference. The Service it was. Awards. 
Yeah, yeah, I think that's the one. I think that's that the one. That was hilarious. Yeah. It was not. It was not people. yesterday, but but the the the, fr the prior yes. Friday. Very yeah, very was good. funny. Yeah, I enjoyed that. I enjoyed that. So, so, you know, everyone, I encourage you to get out there and, you know, find voice-masters.com, find that, uh, you know, sign up for the stream uh, to, to catch those on Fridays. A lot of great information there. Um, all right. So quotes, you already laid one of them, one of them on us. And I love quotes, uh, you know. Oh, I, I can give you a bunch. Oh, well, I want to hear, and I'm going to call them memeisms because that's, that's what yes, they, are. they are. These are little, little nuggets all wrapped in a great you know, little sentence. And I love it. Give us well, some more. Know. Okay, so I'm referred to as the Simon Cowell of the school. <laughs> because yeah. even though I'm very supportive, mm -hmm. I'm very honest. So if somebody gets up there, I'll go, nah, nah. We need that, though. We need that. We honestly, nah, nah, we nah, need nah, that. Nah. And so it's funny, too, because it's kind of what I've been labeled. And Paulette is Paula, uh, Paula Abdul. <laughs> Paula Abdul and Simon. Simon and Paula. <laughs> <laughs> so it's I'm going to send you funny. name tags. <laughs> it's pretty, pretty funny. But this is some of my, okay. The most famous one that I am known for is called, get out of the room. And get out of the room means that when you are performing and when you are up at the mic, I can tell when you're in the room. And what that means is you are judging yourself. So you can't be totally present to the character unless, unless you are completely committed. I will know if you are in the room and how I know is I ask you, how'd that feel? Well, um, you know, I wished I could have done that line differently because my voice, I went, you were in the room. When you're not in the room, and I ask that question, I go, how'd that feel? They go, uh, great. I, I, I didn't know where I was. I just, I was, you were present to what you were doing. So, and then when it gets really bad and you're not out of the room, then I use profanity. <laughs> Okay. Get the F out of the room. Mm. People have it on their computers. They have it, get out of the room, get out of the room, get out of the room. The other one I use is um, balls to the walls. Okay. Which means, no, you're imploding. You need to explode. So I want you to do balls, all your balls thrown to the walls. Everything you got. Everything you got. And okay. so we do that. That's another one. Um, those, the are, those are great. Those are great. Yeah, I love yeah. That, I, I, those are the two that I use primarily. Uh, get out of the room is is the most important thing everybody can do in their life. Get out of get out of the room and balls to the wall. And to me, get out of the room. It's just it's just you step aside and let the character be present. You know, quit. Exactly. Okay, I love that. I love that. And balls to the wall. Give give it all you got. Balls to the that. walls. So whatever Ball, balls, balls you're throwing it out, you throw it and give it it's everything, everything you got, everything you mm. got. So good. Mimi. That, that is so good, Mimi. Yeah, That's we so have good. we have cups on Shopify that says yeah. get out of the room. <laughs> balls <laughs> to the wall. We have everything you okay. can imagine because I always come up with these Mimiisms. Uh, uh, that, you mimi know, isms. Mimi isms. Yeah, those are those are perfect. I love those. I love it. All right. So. Yeah. Um, Audition tips. I mean, hit us, hit us with your don'ts. I mean, what's the don't list when someone goes in on an audition? Uh, obviously, they, they need to get out of the room. That's number one, right? Oh, yeah. If you're in an audition, you mean in-person audition or auditioning at home? Uh, let's see. Um, I, I would say I would say in-person. Okay, let's go in-person. It's new to be in-person again because mm -hmm. basically everything is sent in through it, it really is and i've noticed that i mean uh i i do some um i've acted in some local films around here in kansas city and um mm -hmm. there's only been one that i've went in uh, but that was after you know sending in a video audition so but but i think it, it's picking up right yes i mean uh, people go in for auditions you know um i know look either way it's it's two different it's two different pieces of information i'm gonna get okay okay so in the room when mm -hmm. you're auditioning, 
And we have a, a part of our class that we have called the producer session where actors come in. It's all feigned, set up. Actors come in, they audition, and the producers are in the room, the writers, producers. And we're talking from our own experiences as to what happens when you can be in a room. Coffee, uh, you have a call on five, oh, excuse me, they, they go off in Zoom. I mean, it's, it's, it's amazing. Um, a lot on Zoom happens, I mean, but in, in, in an actual voiceover in person, the same thing can happen. So your job is to come in, not be too chatty, because they're not interested, okay? Thank you. Are you ready? Your business ready to go. You don't sit. You don't schmooze unless it happens organically. And then again, you've got to make sure you put a lid on it. Um, never apologize. Never say I'm sorry ever mm. when you're working, when you're auditioning, because then you take your power away. That's another mimeism. Never say you're sorry, ever. You just stop and go, let me try that again. You have to take control of your audition. Uh, uh, don't be rude. Uh, don't be argumentative, again, with the people directing you. Listen, take direction. Um, if you want, when it's appropriate, you could say, can I try it this way? Can, can, do we have time to try it this way? But always be professional and always show respect to who it is that you're auditioning for. And no apologies, guys. The minute you start apologizing, you've taken all the wind out of your sails. Okay? And come in with a couple of different interpretations. But also know that when you come in to audition, that you put everything forward. Stand up. Don't sit down. Make sure you're in the character. Make sure you use physicality. Physicality is very important. Um, we teach that in animation uh, because your energy is then leveled out. You're not sitting, you're standing and you're able to be part of that person that you're uh, emanating, creating, whatever. Um, so that's very important. And then you leave. Um, and they'll tell you whether or not, you know, they'll say, can you try this again? You just listen to the room and thank you and leave. That's how you do it. Nice. Not uh, great information. I mean, for me personally, and I'm sure for a ton of people that, that will listen, um, what, what's the biggest, um, you know, words of, of encouragement or wisdom. I mean, I know going into an audition like that, I mean, that live audition that, that was, uh, for me, you know, that was the first one I'd done was intimidating. I had to sit there and listen to someone else do the exact part that I was going to do, uh, you know, and, and then do it after them. Uh, so what, what words of, you know, encouragement can you offer people in those situations? Okay. This is another mimeism. Okay. Oh, I'd love it. And hear me and hear me and hear me and hear me and hear me. Probably one of the most profound things I'm going to say, there is no such thing as competition. Mm. Because like you just said, Yes, there's somebody else reading for the role. There'll be 10 other people reading for the same role. They cannot do you, just like you cannot do them. Everybody has to bring their interpretation, the best interpretation of who they are in that role to the forefront. Because chances are, if you don't get it, but you come in with a very strong uh, interpretation of what you want to do and you make it different, different, 
always, I always say, come in with an interpretation that nobody else will probably think of. And here's one advice on this. Beside there's no such thing as competition is always look at the script. Make sure you examine the script. Know who you are, where you are, who you're talking to. Know that each thing you say has a different emotion. And always make sure that you are dedicated to what it is you are doing. I would say look at a script. And many times I will direct people to be juxtaposed to what's going on. Because nobody is really going to think about that. But if somebody has to be very calm and they're very upset, what else would you do? And you come in with a different interpretation. Most casting people, most directors, look for who come in with something unique, something different. So just know everybody's going to read for the same thing. We do this in our school. First class in, we give everybody the same role. And you get to see how there's no such thing as competition. Everybody has their own magic. You just have to commit to what it is you want to explore and then convey. Oh, that's great. That's great. And in, in, in removing that, that, that mindset of competition, it's just, you know, you're, you're all... You're, you're all, you know, creators, actors, you know, just working in the world. Uh, and, and I do remember in that role, I mean, I, I high-fived him. I loved, I loved his performance. I'm like, dude, you rocked it, you know? And that's, uh, I love that. So that's what it's all about. Great. Yeah, Great. and then uh, you have to bring your magic. But everybody has their own magic. You just have to know how to use it, study it, um, understand how to put forth different behavior, Behavior is so important in animation. And I mean that in the voice. In, be, in Again, idiosyncratic behavior. Dash nuance. That's what makes a, a, a full performance come to life. And that's what voice, voice masters is all about, right? Yes. Learning, helping yes. you to learn how, how, to, how, how, to, how to achieve that. How to put there. it all together. Mm, that's great. So good, so good. I love yeah. this. I love all this. I, I'm, I'm so glad that that you know you said yes to this. You know, and, and that uh, we got the chance to sit down and talk. I, I do want to know what what um, what has been your favorite film of 2023. I mean, what what is your what's that one that just did it for you this year? I or have you seen it yet? Have you seen it yet? I I'm just starting to see uh, films uh, now. I don't, I, the verdict is out on how I feel so far okay. because every single film I have seen are so different from each other. Um, I'm trying to think. Well, I'll, I'll tell you mine so far for this year, and I don't know if you've seen it yet or not, and if you haven't, maybe you'll go see it, but it's been uh, Next Goal Wins by Taika Waititi. I mean, that, I mean, he really. really? Wrote, yes. Uh, so um, think of, it, it's, 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 Private Benjamin in a way that it, it, it's an important, there's an important story and message in there, but it's, it's cool runnings, you know, type of comedy. I love it's, cool runnings. Yeah. Okay. Then you, you need to see it. I mean, cause that, that is his all time favorite movie. And uh, he, he basically translated it. And uh, it's the story of the, the most losingest soccer team in, in the, in, in, in the, in the world, in, you know, in history of uh, uh, American Samoa, they lost, uh, I forget what year it was to France. Like, like 30 to nothing, which, mm -hmm. I, I, you know, I don't know if you follow soccer, that's, that's, you know, just enormous and, and, and never heard of, but it's, it's the story of, of a coach, uh, who's, you know, down and out, uh, who goes over and, um, the, the transition and the transformation that happens. And, and it's a beautifully done comedy. So that, that's one I'd recommend for you if you okay. haven't seen it. Okay. Okay. Uh, I just, what do we see? If, if you like cool runnings, you, you will like I this. love cool if runnings. You, if you like, if you like cool running. runnings, you will like this. Okay. I love well, anything uh, has to do with the underdogs. So yeah, th th it, it's all about it's all about underdogs. It, it's all about uh, how how we treat one another, and and I love that. Uh, it, it's it's a beautiful story. Yeah. Super. All right. Well, uh, uh, Mimi, uh, thank you so much for this time. <laughs> You're so uh, welcome. I, 
I've, I've enjoyed it. I've learned so much. I'm definitely going to be all over voicemasters.com. I'll, I'll be uh, uh, signing up because uh, you've got classes You'll coming up in it. January. I'm telling you, you will love this class. I, I, I say this to everybody. It does not come from ego. I promise you this comes from unadulterated love. I really love what I do. So does Paulette. And we really can help facilitate your careers you just have to want it that's it that's the key right you got to go out there and manifest it you have to manifest manifest it, it. I lo- yes i love it well thank you so much i uh, have a You're wonderful uh, a wonderful afternoon and i know i know that we'll be talking soon we will we will and by the way if you want to see a great dubbing a yeah, very very fun absolutely. show that i did last year that's still number one i did the english version of troll for Netflix. The English version of Troll of for Troll. Netflix. Yes. It's Troll. Like very much like King Kong, but okay. it's, it's a heartfelt story. But the right. dubbing and the English version, I have to say, is a lot of fun to watch. And then you get an education on American actors recreating uh, a okay. Film. okay. Nice. So that that is that is that animated live action? That's no, it's live act. It's CGI live, live action. Yeah. CGI live action. Okay. All right. Oh, nice. Okay. Great cast. I, I'm I'm going to be checking that out. Uh, Troll yes, on Netflix. It. That that may be our yeah, watch for tonight. Okay. okay. You'll love you'll love it. I'm excited. Okay. All right. Yeah, that's All our right. watch for tonight. Take care. You too. Thanks. All right. Be talking to you soon. Bye, everybody. <laughs>